Welcome back to Daytime Ottawa. We go from one artist to another in this next segment, uh, talking to a wonderful musician. It's a, a return to home for him on December 3rd. He's going to be performing his latest project called The Moth Project at the Great Canadian Theatre Company. I'm joined by Peter Kieswalter, um, originally from Ottawa. Where, where do I find you now? Uh, Columbus, Texas. Columbus, Texas. Well, uh, I believe your your wife is from Texas. A am I correct in that? Uh, Whitney, my girlfriend. Yeah, oh, she's sorry. she's yeah, here. We're girlfriend. celebrating Thanksgiving with your with your family down here. But very yes. nice, very nice. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, I mean, a great opportunity to introduce you to our, our viewers, Peter. Those that are, are perhaps not familiar with you, tell us a little bit about your your background and your connection to Ottawa here. I just realized, Derek, that. I I've been in New York for 25 years. I just celebrated my 25th anniversary there. So I came in 97 um, on a Canada Council grant, actually, to, uh, to, to study privately with a couple of musicians in New York, um, and then never really went back. Um, been back, obviously, a bunch of times in the summer and at Christmas, and I bring my kids up there to the, to the, the family cottage in the summer, which right. is where this show was born. Um, but yeah, I've been kind of down here applying my uh, my trade for 25 years. Nice. And but you studied here in Ottawa, right? That's right at Ottawa University. Uh, I actually did two years of economics at Carleton. Okay. I uh, hated it. <laughs> I studied music at Ottawa. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. I, I I tried to go into accounting oh, and it, it just it wasn't for me either, Peter. So I I, I get where you're coming from. Um, but you've had a, an amazing journey, you know, since you moved to New York. Uh, tell us about that journey. You know, starting in 1997, what what it's been like for you there. Uh, luck, a um, lot of luck, um, and uh, um, you know, I I. I sort of a job fell into my lap. I was resident composer at ABC Television for six years, um, which sort of kept me there. It, it allowed me to afford to live in New York City for for a good amount of time. But right. you know, it's a diverse city for culture and music, especially. So um, I learned learned a lot from people who really kicked my ass uh, down there, and um, was lucky enough to to be able to to do a bit of my own thing. Um, starting with the East Village Opera Company back in in the early aughts, um, and then more recently with, uh, with 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 this show, thanks to the pandemic, <laughs> in, in no small part. Well, yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, um, really difficult yeah. on on for most artists, right? I mean, let's be honest, almost era, yeah. most most industries. But I, I always look, you know, focus yeah. on how difficult it was for artists, especially that for artists that love to perform, and that's something you love to do. You love performing live. You didn't have that opportunity, so um, again. And you reached out for for a grant and uh, tell me tell me about that entire process well you know so um there's not a lot of uh um recorded music being sold these more uh, any these days right because of streaming so right. musicians like myself are forming that's that's their livelihood when the pandemic hit i had about a year year and a half worth of, of touring just canceled not postponed outright canceled um, mm. without much to, to sort of fall back on. Uh, and I'm not alone in this regard. You know, everyone yeah. in the service industry went through the same thing, but especially people who play in small clubs and theaters. So thank goodness for, for Canada and the Canada Council. I applied for a grant to do something a little different, um, to try something that, uh, well, um, had a message of, of the importance of diversity and bio and cultural diversity, especially, but also to bring it to places in non-traditional performing um, environments like outdoor amphitheaters and state and provincial parks and libraries, galleries, outdoor spaces, um, indoor spaces. And uh, so that allowed me to, to focus on this for a couple of months. Um, and now uh, Whitney and I are getting ready to roll this out next year, but we're doing a few shows, a few preview shows up in Canada and one in Cleveland next week, just to see what this looks and sounds like. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the, the process is exciting, of course. Um, where did the, yeah. the moth idea come from? I mean, I think you touched on it there uh, for a moment, but just tell me about the moth um, yeah. theme. The cottage. So okay. in summers, I bring my kids. I have three kids. Um, I, I try to take them out of New York for the, the whole summer and bring them to the family cottage, you know, which is sort of near Perth, Ontario, on a lake, like a lot of Canadians have. And... Uh, plug them into nature again and i've been talking with my little brother who is uh, a parks an ontario parks um 
uh, interpreter. Oh, cool. Um, over okay. what, what are we supposed to do? Um, you know, his job is also facing a bit of a crisis. And how do we get this message of we need to pay attention to the earth? What the earth tell us for quite a few decades now, which is uh, uh, we got to we got to pay attention. We need to, to develop a sense of awe and wonder and connection to the natural world again, or else, um, you know, we're not going to be around for much, much longer. Yeah. Um, so in, in doing so, we're sitting around the campfire at night and Toby, my brother, uh, has been taking pictures of moths as a hobby. And uh, I was astounded to see that just from the cottage alone over the course of a summer, there's over 300 species, different species of moths that he's documented. Wow. Um, and I saw that as a, as a, as a, good metaphor for where I am in New York, a very rich, culturally diverse place, um, and the importance of it, that uh, um, when there's a diverse ecosystem, it really helps everyone out. You know, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of interdependence among species and plants, and yeah. um, and this is a good thing. Um, and Toby was saying, I think we need help get this message out. Um, and so Toby and I sort of collaborated on this. Um, I checked with him about the science, but this is sort of my interpretation of of, um, of moths. I'm exploring the mythology of it. Why, right. for example, in Western mythology, moths are harbingers of death and doom and destruction, whether it's in the Bible or in Shakespeare. But in indigenous mythology, moths are they are awesome. They're they're seen as guardians of dream time and uh, transformation, metamorphosis. Um, so I'm exploring a little bit of, about that and uh, trying to um, a bit of interpersonal stories uh, uh, using themes of migration. You know, my parents migrated after after World War II from Europe to Canada. Moths migrate. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to connect uh, yeah. moths to my own. Um, with, uh, with 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 stories and and some science as well, but I'm not a scientist, so right, right. I'm a musician. No, it's uh, it's amazing, and the way that you use sort of all these different facets of, of multimedia just in those visuals looks absolutely stunning. Peter, thanks thanks so much for yeah. joining us. Really appreciate. It. I'll just remind everybody Thank at home. Me. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, the Moth Project happening at the Great Canadian Theatre Company, December the third. Get your tickets while you can.